Okay, we are live now. Welcome to the City of Cape Girardeau One Cape virtual series where we learn more about uh, public officials and public servants and all the wonderful things they do for our community. On today's session, we're learning a little bit more about what council does, what the roles and responsibilities are, and who they work with to get it done for the City of Cape Girardeau. Um, with us today, we have Mayor Fox, Bob Fox, and City Clerk and Citizen Services Director, Gail Conrad. I turn it first to Mayor Fox. Thank you all for being here and feel free to ask questions in the chat. Thanks so much. Mayor Fox. Good afternoon. I'm uh, here to, you know, this, the title of this was demystifying local government and, that, and that's interesting to say the least, but uh, I'm here to talk about our city government and the council and kind of how it works. Our, uh, our government is based on uh, the fact that our city is a charter city. And by that, I mean, years ago, a commission was formed to develop a charter, which is basically like our constitution. It lays out all the guidelines by which we operate. Uh, we are basically a council city manager form of government. And there are cities that operate in different manners, but ours, we, we as a council <clears throat> hire a city manager and that city manager then actually does the managing of the city's business and the employees and all the departments. Council members are elected uh, volunteers. Uh, they're part-time. Uh, we have six wards in Cape Girardeau uh, delineated by certain geographical boundaries. Uh, all of the wards are different sizes, uh, but they're, they're uh, tried to, they're, they try to make these equal by population and uh, by registered voters. And after the census in uh, 2020, those boundaries might change somewhat uh, based on population movements. Uh, and then the mayor's elected at large by the whole city. Uh, and again, we were elected volunteers, we're part-time. We don't have offices. Uh, we are able to use the, uh, um, the city manager's office at times if we have meetings. Uh, or we'll meet off-site sometimes with different people in the community. Uh, you know, you, the citizens, are the ones that that uh, voted this charter in and, and set the guidelines by which we operate. So uh, it was set up, as, you know, it's by the people and for the people. Uh, the council focuses on making policies and, and uh, passing ordinances or laws and we don't do any administration duties at all. Uh, Gail and the rest of the staff get into that. Uh, we, we appoint different people sometimes to carry out city business. Uh, we we uh, appoint staff to, to carry out some city business. But basically the city manager uh, is like our CEO. Uh, just, and I compare that because being on the school board in the past, I compare that to school boards because basically a school board is the same way. They hire a superintendent and that person does all the hiring of all the employees and you're there just to uh, create policy by which we operate. Uh, can't think of anything else uh, unless someone's got any questions. We do have a question submitted by the uh, newspaper, actually, about council members receiving any kind of stipend. The councils do, council members do get a very small stipend. Council members get $100 a month. And as the mayor, I get $150 a month. Uh, and that might, might at times pay for gas, going to meetings and going to different stuff. But uh, it's, it's very minor. Uh, and that, that's not a big deal because you do this. You volunteer to do this, and you do this because you want to serve the city and you want to serve the citizens. So uh, you're not there for the money. I can guarantee you that. Gail smiling. And as the mayor indicated, the council does appoint uh, staff to carry out the city business and handle the day-to-day -day operations of the city. And um, the primary person they hire is the city manager. He serves at the will of the city council. He's hired by the council to manage and oversee the operations <laughs> of the entire city, all the city departments, um, and the city manager can then appoint, hire 
other employees under him and he hires um, department heads to assist him in managing each individual department as well. Uh, he directs and supervises all the departments and all the department heads and he works very closely with them on the day-to-day -day operations. Um, he's responsible for the enforcement of all the city laws and ordinances and policies that the council adopts, the city manager is responsible for enforcing those. He has to keep the council informed of all conditions of the city, projects, financial condition, um, anything that's going on in the city, he has to keep them up to date on. He does prepare, prepare an annual uh, financial report with the assistance of the finance director and presents that to the council for approval. Um, and like I said, he, he, he facilitates with each department head the efficient operation of every department. So um, he's, he's where the council is the policy making group, the city manager kind of serves as the means to uh, make sure that those policies and those ordinances are enforced. The council also um, appoints a city treasurer and in our city that uh, that city treasurer also serves as our city's finance director. Um, they are responsible for the overall financial management of the city. Um, they have to take care of managing our uh, revenue, all of our expenses, all of our investments, um, all of our budgeting. Um, they are required um, annually to submit a proposed operating budget that has to be approved, a balanced operating budget to be approved by the council, as well as an annual capital improvements program, which is basically a, a plan for uh, capital projects for the city over the next five to 10 years. Um, the council also then also hires or appoints, uh, appoints the city clerk, um, which traditionally in the past is, uh, that position has also served as the administrative assistant to the city manager. Um, the council can assign to the city manager to uh, oversee the day-to-day -day operations and the day-to-day -day work of the city clerk, which is what they do. Um, the city clerk serves as a custodian of records for the city, uh, basically is the transparency arm of the city. Uh, all records uh, must be maintained according to the uh, Missouri Sunshine Law or the Open Meetings and Records Law, as it's also called, as well as uh, has to comply with all of the regulations of the Secretary of State's Records Retention Office. The clerk is responsible for journaling all proceedings of the council. Um, any meetings of the council must be documented, all actions and formal votes taken and managed. Um, any ordinances, resolutions that are adopted has to manage those records and, and take care of those as well. Um, so going on a little bit about the city council meetings, uh, the city charter requires the council to meet twice a month. Um, so right now their policy is that they meet the first and third Monday of each month. And uh, unless there's um, a holiday, they do meet on the first and third Monday and they can call special meetings. Uh, the mayor can call a special meeting or if three or more council members request a special meeting, they can call that as well. As part of a policy that the council's adopted, the council also holds a study session beginning at 5 p.m. just prior to every city council meeting. During the study session, they'll review what's on the agenda. They also We'll maybe hear presentations from various groups about um, things that are going on. They hear from advisory boards, and uh, they have the, that's the opportunity for them to discuss issues going on in the city and issues that are on the agenda as well. At a, at a council meeting, um, no action is can be formally adopted until there's a motion by the council and approved. Has to be a motion and approved by majority of the council, and with our council, that's four of of the seven people. And um, like I said, an, a, a motion has to be made and approved on every action for it to be um, adopted. Under the Sunshine Law, notices of all meetings must be provided at least 24 hours prior to our meetings. So generally, if our meeting is on Monday, we have our agendas posted Friday mornings. They're available. We actually physically post them on a bulletin board at City Hall, and they're also available on our city website. Um, the full agenda packet is available, so the public can go in and see all the items, all the ordinances, resolutions, and any information that's provided by staff to the council. Typically, the public is welcome to attend all of our meetings in person, and generally we open to the public. However, due to COVID, uh, we are currently operating under the protocol. Our meetings are being held via Zoom. Uh, the public can watch if, if they just want to watch it. It is available on the on the city's YouTube channel. If they want to participate, they can go to our city's website and they can register at, uh, at register for the meeting by 4 p.m. the day of the meeting and um, then they can be uh, participate via that Zoom meeting. And uh, currently our, our next council meeting is Tuesday, January 19th, and that will be by Zoom. Uh, the decision has not been made yet as far as February, how we're gonna proceed. So just 
stay up to date on the city's website. And that's about what I got. Back to you, man. I would, you know, I would say the meetings I think are important to the public because we, we always allow uh, people to appear before the meetings. Uh, there's a section in the meeting where they can talk about something that's not on the agenda uh, and they can bring up, they bring up any topic that, that uh, may concern them. They may have an issue, a specific issue that they may have not contacted a council member about and they want to bring it before the whole council. Uh, and, or it may be something completely different. Uh, it could involve anything that, that's on their mind. And there's also a part on the agenda where you can talk about things that are on the agenda that evening. And uh, again, those may pertain to questions about a particular ordinance or a, a particular item that's on the agenda. Community groups are welcome. Uh, one of the things that I do as mayor is I help people can request proclamations. Uh, I do uh, several of those a year, sometimes several a month just depends on what it is. Um, you know, as a mayor, I also uh, represent the city uh, in many different ways. Uh, some of those may be on different boards uh, like Magnet or Simpo or MRCTI, which is the Missouri Rivers Cities and Towns and Initiatives. Uh, and I do that because the city does need to be represented. And uh, it, it uh, means more meetings and whatnot, but the city has to have a say and, and uh, have and know what's going on. Uh, every, uh, every council member also is involved with different advisory boards in the city. Uh, uh, different council members have different assignments to uh, different advisory boards and, and maybe different committees and, and whatnot. Uh, so that we kind of spread that work out and everybody gets a chance to, to take part in different things going on. Uh, it's uh, one of the most important things that our council is doing right now, uh, and that is recruiting a new city manager because our, certain, our current city manager, Scott Meyer, has announced his retirement at the end of June. Uh, we started that process last fall. Uh, uh, hiring a, uh, a consultant to help us do that, who's, an, who's the, the firm is, is, is just excellent at hiring city managers and city employees. And uh, we have just developed and approved uh, the final version of a recruitment brochure that talks about our city, the benefits, uh, talks about lots of different things that go on here, talks about challenges and opportunities. Uh, anything that a prospective city manager might want to know, uh, at least it gives them an idea of, of uh, things that they might research if they want to learn more. Uh, that process begins really this week or next week. Uh, the uh, announcements go out to various publications, various entities around the country. Uh, it is a national search and uh, we will uh, accumulate those and by the, oh, I'm going to say the end of March or first part of April, the council will have narrowed that to a few finalists and we will be conducting interviews and uh, hopefully have that decision made uh, sometime in April. But as a council, uh, when you, your city manager is, is of vital importance to your city as far as everything that goes on, because they, you know, like Gail said, they that person runs the city. Uh, they're your chief executive officer. So uh, it's important with a city, just like any major corporation, you have to have someone uh, of high quality at the helm. And uh, we are challenged with doing that. And it is a big job. Can't think of anything else. More questions, Nicolette? We did have some um, submitted questions. This one is actually probably for both of you to answer. Um, the question is, it is my understanding that the airport manager reports to the deputy city manager. So there's some delegation of accountability within staff. Yes. Um, Gail, would you maybe answer first? Because I think you were talking a little bit about those specific few um, uh, positions that report directly to council and that there is some delegation authority. Could we start there, please, Gail? 
Yes. Um, like you said, the, the council directly hires the city manager and um, the city manager then in turn uh, has the authority to hire um, other employees under him. And we do have a deputy city manager um, and under the structure of our government that um, directly reports to the city manager. And um, we have quite a few departments in the city and some do report uh, directly to Scott and some report to Scott through the deputy city manager as well. And the airport is one of those that I said reports uh, through the deputy city manager um, and, and who is in constant communication with the city manager um, pretty much on a daily basis. And so uh, you know, even though that the council does appoint like the city clerk and the city treasurer, those are duties that um, are required under the city charter, but they also have functions, other functions for the day-to-day -day operations of the city that are under the purview of the city manager as well. Does that explain that a little bit? Mayor Fox, anything to add on that one? I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, she's correct. The airport manager reports to Molly, who then inter in turn reports to Scott. Uh, it would be difficult with the city of our size, with the departments, uh, for a city manager to, to handle all of the daily operations by him or herself. Uh, you've got to delegate some of that uh, and have some help. And that comes in handy when when uh, situations arise where, you know, especially with COVID this last year with people being out here and there and uh, it's made it difficult for us to, to get a lot of things done efficiently, but we've managed and done very well at it. Right, and, and the deputy manager does act in the absence of the city manager, um, whether it be for illness like a COVID or a vacation or, you know, a temporary period out of the office, um, any position you need to have redundancy in what you do. And it's always good to have, um, it's always good practice to have uh, a backup in any position. And that's kind of what the deputy does is serve uh, with the city manager and is up to date on what's going on in the city. Great, thank you both. Uh, another submitted question. Uh, maybe this one for Gail. How do people find their council members? How do they contact them? Um, council members, uh, you can find them in a couple of ways. And you're welcome to call the city manager's office. And we can, you know, if you don't know who your council member is, you can call into the city manager's office. We can tell you what ward you're in based upon your address. We can give you the contact information for your council member. Uh, you can also go to the city's website if you want to do your own research and find out what ward you live in. We do have an interactive GIS map that you can um, click on and it can tell you what ward you live in and from there it directly links you to um, your council member. Each council member has their own web page on our website, has all their contact information um, by email and by, by telephone. Um, so you can contact, contact them that way. We also have a general information uh, page on our website that if you just have a general question or citizen inquiry, um, you can uh, select that as well. You can select it to go to all council members or you know, by ward or even just in it as a general inquiry to the city. So you can do it any of those ways. Thank you for that. And I think this one might be for the mayor. So we, uh, uh, the general public can contact the council, but the council should only work, work with city employees through the appointed staff. Could you speak to that for a moment? Actually, the council should, you know, we, we mainly deal through the city manager. Uh, if, uh, if uh, someone calls uh, me and they have a problem with a pothole or they have a problem with trash pickup or something else, I will contact Scott who will in turn uh, contact that person. And we do that. We uh, do things like that with uh, official council inquiries uh, where I'll, I'll, on behalf of a citizen, I'll fill out an inquiry for a particular problem. And that, you know, it, it's then followed officially and uh, dealt with and then either staff will get back in touch with that that person or I will get back in touch with that person or both uh, but basically we we deal we don't deal directly with uh, particular employees or particular departments thank you sir and I think this one's back to Gail when is the next election um, our next election is in April of 2022. It may seem like it's a long time away, but it, it approaches very quickly. Um, in April of 2022, there will be elections for the mayor and then for the council positions for awards one, two, and six. Um, petitions will start being available in late September, I believe, and filings actually start in October. Uh, with our city charter, uh, we have set 
the council, or by, by adoption of the charter, it set the guidelines for when people um, can register. And it's a little bit earlier than what the state guidelines are, um, just a little bit earlier. But um, like I said, there'll be a, the petitions will be available in uh, early fall, and the filings will begin in late October. You might mention Great, you. Uh, you might mention about the petitions. Yes, uh, for to run for city council, um, each uh, candidate um, obviously they have to be a resident of the city, and depending upon if you're a ward or the mayor, you have certain um, residence requirements and how long a period of time you have to have resided in your ward. But you have to have a signature or a petition um, submitted to the city that must be signed by a minimum of 50 registered voters that are registered to vote for you um, in the election. And so it is um, up to you, you, whether you go, you know, if you're in a ward, obviously um, the signatures can only be from people who reside in your ward and are registered to vote in your ward. And the mayor, he's elected, he or she is elected at large. And so that petition can be signed by any registered voter from anyone within the city. And then that petition is submitted uh, to the clerk which is then we verify the signatures to make sure that everybody is a registered voter and is eligible to vote for that candidate. And um, once that's verified, then they're officially become a candidate for council or for mayor. That's always a question that people ask. So I thought that might be a good. Great, thank you both for that. And I think the last question was submitted on Facebook about the recent uh, tragic events that occurred in Washington, D.C. Um, I think the, the obvious issue here is, is, I think it was last Wednesday um, when there was that assault on the Capitol. Did the city issue a statement about those recent events in D.C.? I don't think the city issued an official statement. Uh, generally, you know, as a city, we won't issue statements on, you know, things that happen nationally. Uh, you know, what happened was deplorable and, and embarrassing for our country and, and uh, a lot of people are going to be prosecuted and uh, that's, where, that's the way it should be. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for your comments. We'll give everybody one more moment just to ask any additional questions. Um, we had some folks here on the, the Zoom call and we had some folks viewing on Facebook. Um, and as I continue to stall, I'm not seeing any other questions come in. So I just wanted to thank our speakers, again, Mayor Fox and City Clerk and Citizen Services Director Gail Conrad. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for communicating with the public. A reminder for those still listening, you can go to cityofcape.org slash one cape series. You can see the remaining uh, topics that we have scheduled through April on Monday's opposite council meetings. You're welcome to join us live here on the Zoom call. You can ask questions on Facebook or just listen in. Thank you so much for everyone being here today. Thank you, Nicolette, for putting this together. Thank you, Gail, for helping. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Take it. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.